Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please be seated. So there was a rich man who was worried that he couldn't take his earthly treasures to heaven with him when he died. And so before he died, he reached into his private vault, grabbed a couple of gold bars, and put them in a briefcase and locked the briefcase. And then he gave his family explicit directions to handcuff the briefcase to his body and put the key in his burial suit when he was buried. Well, when the guy got to the pearly gates that we've all heard about, right, St. Peter asked him a little question. He said, hey, I noticed you got a briefcase there. What's in it? The man was very proud that he had thought so far ahead. And so he reached in, grabbed his key, popped open the briefcase, and showed him what he had brought. And St. Peter says, oh, that's so nice. You bought pavement. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. <laughs> All right. So the streets of heaven are paved with gold. You know that. That's why I don't do jokes very often in worship. Not my calling. Anyway, over the last several weeks, couple weeks, we have been talking and hearing what God has to say about the topic of giving. Not just our wealth, but our time and our talent also. And we have heard through the story of two rich people. We have heard through a generous father and how he deals with his two sons that our Father in Heaven's generosity results in one of two questions that we would ask. Either, Father, what must I do with all of my gifts that I might earn eternal life? Or, Father, now that I have received eternal life, what can I do with these gifts that you have given me? And the question we ask determines what we think might be the source of our gifts. Though we might tend to see the source of all of our stuff as our own bodies and our own minds, the reality is all these things actually come from God. They are actually a loan to us in this life to be used in this life to participate as God's hands and feet as he performs his mission in creation through us to seek and to save the lost. And as we go about our daily lives in the world, we might not realize it, but we do have quite a bit of stuff. Some of us have more than others. Some of us have less, but we all have something. It may not be all that we want, but it is all that we need. And it's all part of God's plan for his creation. And regardless of what we have, he gives us, his grace leads us to joyous and generous worship of him through the use of these gifts, not just on a Sunday morning, but throughout the week in our lives, as we use all of our gifts, our time, our talent, and our treasure. In his second letter to the Corinthians, St. Paul heaps praises upon Corinth's neighbors, Macedonia. The Macedonians are in the neighborhood and they are suffering from severe poverty and persecution. Yet, these people still live joyfully in God's overflowing grace for them. They had experienced God's abundance, even in their distress, so much so that they literally begged Paul to be allowed to participate in the collection for the church in Jerusalem a group of people who were suffering a similar level of poverty and persecution. 
as God's grace overflowed into the Macedonians' lives, they put their faith and trust in God. That even as they gave away what little they had, they trusted that God would continue to care for all of their needs, both now in this life, but more importantly, for eternity. The Macedonians responded with lives of joyous, generous worship of God. Unlike the Macedonians, the Corinthians, well, they were drowning in worldly abundance. And Paul lauded them in part, saying, You excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness, and in your love for us. But their excellence only went so far. Their head knowledge was certainly strong, but their heart knowledge, their heart knowledge needed a little work. And Paul rebuked them, saying, See that you excel in this act of grace, giving, also. The Corinthians certainly accepted God's gifts to them, but they had a hard time figuring out how to share those gifts that they had so abundantly received, sharing them with others in a willing, selfless, and joyful manner. And this left their response to God their worship of God, incomplete. Every moment of every day comes as an unmerited gift to us from God. Each day, you and I work with what God has given us, our time, our talent, and our treasure. These gifts from God are given to us not to keep to ourselves, but God actually wants us to share them with others. His provision to us is intended to joyfully and generously be given to others as we trust that God will continue to pour his gifts over us again each new day, kind of like water flowing over a massive waterfall. God calls us to trust him for his continued lavish, overflowing of abundance toward us. There are among us both Macedonians and Corinthians. By design, I don't have any idea what any of your giving habits might be. I know my own, and that's all. But I know that many of you are, in fact, Macedonians. <laughs> you are those who fully understand that all we have comes from God. And whether it is little or whether it is great, you trust God's continuing provision as you regularly respond to him, as you regularly worship him with your joyous, generous offerings giving in proportion to what God has already given you. And for evidence of this, I point to our recently completed Following Him in Faith campaign. Many of you have completed your commitment to this campaign. You have helped us achieve a three-year goal of collecting over $700,000 over and above our regular offerings. Your Macedonian generosity has provided the resources to allow God's word to be proclaimed in truth and light here in worship each Sunday. And not just in, this build, in the building with these beautiful screens and, and sound system, but outside this building as we have many people all over the country now worshiping with us live through our live stream. 
Your generosity also enabled us to put that beautiful sign out on Route 4 and 2 so that the thousands of passers-by each day can see a place where God's Word is proclaimed in truth and light. And by the grace of God, this summer, we hope to begin construction of a new addition that will greatly benefit our Little Lambs preschool ministry, our youth ministry, our worship ministry, our human care, and outreach ministries. And all this is only possible because many of you have trusted God to care for you as you have joyously and generously worshipped Him. And I also know that some of us are maybe a little bit more like those Corinthians than we might care to admit. We know that God has provided for our needs, but we find difficulty finding a way to proportionally give back some of what God has already given us. God doesn't care about the amount. Nowhere in the New Testament does he say you must give this amount. But he does say that he desires his gifts to be shared in joy. Telling us through his Apostle Paul, each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. The famous words of one of my former pastors, God doesn't want any grumpy pennies put in the plate. If you got a grumpy penny, keep it in your pocket. Yet, for many reasons, some of us fight to keep all we have. Maybe it's because we've spent it all on ourselves first. And there's nothing left to give to anyone else. Maybe we think that, you know what, I've given my time. I've given my talent. I don't need to give an offering. The offering is optional, we might think. But Paul tells us the offering is clearly not optional. It is a part of our worship. He writes, but as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, and in all earnestness, and in your love for us, see that you excel in this act of grace, giving also. God's overflowing grace warrants our joyous, generous worship. Paul says of God's grace toward each and every one of us. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. All creation is his. He is the King and Lord of all things seen and unseen. Yet, he deliberately impoverished himself, giving up his throne in heaven for a crude manger in a barn, born to a poor young woman and her working class husband. Though Jesus was rich, he became pathetically poor. Nothing to his name except perhaps a cloak his tunic, and a pair of sandals. Jesus had to borrow almost everything he had, when you think about it. He borrowed food from other people's fields. For meals, he was most often invited to be a guest at another's table. To pay the required temple tax, he borrowed a coin found in the mouth of a fish. He even borrowed a donkey, to enter the city of Jerusalem. The king of kings lived in worldly poverty. 
And though he was surrounded by throngs of people and many loyal disciples, as soon as the going got tough, they fled. They abandoned him. And they watched from a distance as he was tried and falsely convicted by the worldly rich and powerful. Jesus emptied himself completely as his blood overflowed onto the wooden cross. And he continued to shower his abundant grace down upon the earth as he hung there, forgiving those who pierced his hands and feet with the nails, forgiving the thief on a cross who came to faith as he too hung dying, and utterly broken and poor, Jesus died. And then he borrowed one more thing, a grave. Jesus gave all that he had so that you, by his poverty, might become rich. My brothers and sisters, whether we are haves or have-nots, we all receive our daily bread from God our Father in heaven. We also, all of us, are poor, miserable sinners, literally beggars before God, condemned to eternal death. But for all who believe in Jesus, who believe in his sacrifice, we have been made eternally rich as he has defeated the power of sin and death to forever separate us from our Father in heaven and the endless supply of all we desire that we will have one day. It's not that day just yet. And until that day, when we are raised to new life, here we are in this place. Not only does God's grace continue to flow over all of us each time we ask for forgiveness, each time we hear God's word, each time we partake of his sacraments, it flows over us as he daily and richly provides for all our needs of body and soul. To some, he gives much. To others, just a little. But to all, he gives. And through his daily provision, God provides for our needs to sustain us in that body and in that soul that we might participate in his mission to joyfully proclaim God's word and to enthusiastically share Christ's love. Trusting in his continued provision, let us all excel in all things as we joyously and generously worship him with all of our gifts. I pray. Dear Father in heaven, help us to respond to your overflowing grace toward us with joyful thanks and praise that expresses our faith in worshipful stewardship of the treasures you have given to us. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.